Welcome to another Howls and Growls Breakdown. And today we're talking about how Minnesota defied the odds, pulled back a 20-point deficit, and defeated the reigning champs to advance to the Western Conference Finals. And while there were many things that went into this win, it always begins and ends with defense for this Minnesota team. And in that third quarter, they put on another defensive showreel. They've played more suffocating and more loud defense this season and even in this series, but this was technical proficiency on another level. So it was all about nailing the basics in this game. Cat has to get over this screen to avoid Gobert switching up onto Jokic and into a bad matchup, but then Gobert needs to do his job and get into double Jokic, and that means McDaniels needs to help the helper and get a body on Gordon. So they take away the first two options, and now it's Conley who is called on to dig down and double while Anthony Edwards is helping the helper now. And again, it's all about accountability. Conley is sprinting back to the corner to shut off the swing pass. McDaniels is back out there and getting over the screen. Towns is hedging the pick. And Gobert is stepping into the lane to help on a potential roll from Jokic. And really it all ends in that contested three from Murray. You see how that's not overly striking to the eye in full speed. But those granular details are really impressive. And that permeated throughout the whole quarter. Again, next possession, Edwards is getting over the screen to stay in front of Murray. Towns is playing two here to force a reset on the offense. And when Murray does slip back door, Gobert is there to rotate over and block the shot as he has been all season long. And those types of plays lead to easy buckets going the other way. And it really felt like Minnesota needed that in this game where Denver themselves had a really strong defensive game plan. Again, it was the simple stuff that worked so well for them in this game. When Jokic tries for this little give and go, Towns needs to beat him to the spot and just make life difficult on the catch. And Joker is always going to make the right play, but they have to keep toiling away on it. So they send the double here. And when he flings that pass out, Edwards is going to be there to sprint out and help with a strong contest. It's not pretty stuff, but it's the kind of multiple effort defensive plays that won Minnesota this series. Again, Towns beats Jokic to the spot on this drive, and that's super important because it throws him off his usual cadence and allows the perimeter defenders to do their thing. Ant comes on the double to force the pass, Conley helps the helper, McDaniels comes off the corner to close out on KCP, and then even when Jokic comes back up and picks off McDaniels with his moving screen, Towns quickly steps up to switch and force a tough mid-range jumper from a player that Denver don't want taking that shot. And then sometimes you just have to rely on individual brilliance, so enter Jaden McDaniels. He goes under the first screen on the non-shooter, then when that second screen comes, he slips over it seamlessly. And when Denver try to reset from the corner, he's calling out the switch and taking on the responsibility to do it again. He squeezes under the screen once more, stays in front, and then flips it to go back over the screen again. And all of that is wasting shot clock. And that's how you get Jokic to shoot a semi-contested three instead of doing his work inside the arc where he is pretty close to unstoppable. And what they did so well in this quarter and this series is shut off Jokic's options and at least make life a little bit more difficult for him. He's such a brilliant player and he's going to get busy every night, but you can't just let him play on cruise control. So you have to front him here to avoid that quick touch in the offense and Towns has to start to move him out of his sweet spot on the block if he wants the ball. Again, this is burning clock. It's shutting off options. Then he has to get through this snug screen here, which avoids the switch and doesn't allow Jokic to dictate the defense. And then it's go time. Conley digs in, and that calls Edwards to start drifting up. And again, it's McDaniels. Jokic wants to make this pass to Brown cutting behind Edwards, and McDaniels steps into that lane 
and forces him to reconsider and that's when they can pounce on him. Force that turnover and then they can get out into transition and find more easy points. I'm going to keep saying this because it is true. They just nailed the details and then nailed them again and then nailed them all quarter and really I think it broke Denver. Towns isn't going to give up this easy switch in the backcourt. They're not going to allow Jokic to handpick his matchups and dominate them as a result. Instead, they're going to make him beat their game plan. They're going to run Alexander Walker at him here on that top side double. They're going to force him to pass the ball. And when he does, they're going to fan back out and close down jumpers like Reed does there. Then McDaniels is going to keep being huge enough to play between two while Alexander Walker recovers. Then they're going to do it all again with Nas coming on the double and Towns was there all night to body up on Jokic and make his looks tough when he did have to go to work at the end of the shot clock and that really wore him down towards the end of this game. And that's how Minnesota won the game and won the series. This was all in one quarter. One quarter of dominance and heart and effort and above all, one quarter of game plan discipline. Now I know there were plenty of massive possessions on both ends in the fourth quarter of this game, but I just don't think Denver had the fight or the willpower to win after Minnesota hunted them down in this third quarter and put on a defensive highlight reel. They taxed them to the point of no return in my opinion and ultimately they were able to steamroll them when it mattered late in the game. And now we get to see whether Minnesota can do it again against a new challenge in Luka Doncic and the red hot Dallas Mavericks. So thanks for watching Howls and Growls and don't forget to subscribe for more.